So let's look at uh, a protocol, uh, a method which uh, allows for a shared key to be generated and also for us to prove the identity of two entities. It uses a trusted uh, entity known as Trent. So Trent is trusted enough to be able to uh, store both the both the encryption keys for Bob and Alice. So Bob and Alice have a key each and they will uh, store that in the repository that uh, Trent owns. So initially Alice uh, contacts Trent and gives her identity and also the identity of Bob that she's trying to contact. So Alice will send A and B to Trent. Trent then finds the keys that are associated with Bob and Alice and then we'll generate a unique or random key which will which will be implemented within the session between Bob and Alice. Trent also uh, creates a timestamp for the current time, defines a lifetime for the amount of time the key and the identities will be valid for, creates our key, and then we'll encrypt that with Alice's private or shared key. So Trent will take the timestamp, the lifetime, the new key that is created, and Bob's identity, and then encrypt that whole lot with Alice's private key. So obviously Alice will be able to decrypt this on the other side. Along with that, along with this, he takes the time stamp, the lifetime, the new key, and Alice's ID and then encrypts that with Bob's encryption key. So obviously Alice won't be able to decrypt this this part of the message. And this is known as a as a ticket that is sent. And the ticket will be passed to Bob. So at the other end, obviously when Alice receives the two elements, then she's able to decrypt to find the timestamp, the lifetime the new session key and Bob's identity. She then takes her identity, adds the timestamp that Trent has sent and then will encrypt it with the new session key. And then she'll send through the, the other part of the message that she received which is the encrypted part that, that Bob can decrypt with the timestamp the, the the lifetime, the key and Alice's identity. So she sends both of these elements over so then Bob will be able to decrypt this part here with his key. He then determines the timestamp, the lifetime and well, is able to get the key, the session key from here and also Alice's identity. So with this key here, he is then able to decrypt this part. He takes off the identity of Alice and checks that it was the same as the one there. He then looks at the timestamp and then in reply back to Alice, he will take the timestamp plus one and encrypt it with the new key that has been created between Bob and Alice. He sends that back and Alice is then able to decrypt it because she knows the the session key and checks the time. So let's have a look at an example of this. We'll go to the encryption section and then if we look for Kerberos, here we are. Okay, so let's see the Bob's, Alice's uh, we just have this around the wrong way. Uh, Alice's identity is Alice and Bob's identity is Bob. Then Bob will create, Bob and Alice will create uh, keys and then register them with Trent. So let's start off the connection. First time uh, Alice sends to Trent the, the ID of Alice and Bob. 
content then generates a timestamp with a lifetime. Let's say this is 100 seconds. And then Trent calculates a new random key, then takes uh, Bob's identity and also Alice's. It will then uh, use the new session key, this one, with the timestamp, the lifetime, and Bob's identity to create this key. And then for the second part, uh, we'll encrypt for Bob Alice's ID, the new key, timeline, and the lifetime. On the other side, then Alice is able to decrypt the first part of it. Uh, this should be key E, Alice's key. So then Alice then will be able to determine uh, Bob's identity and also the key. She then takes the that time, will then re-encrypt with uh, the new session key along with her own identity and send that along with the other part of the message that was sent by Trent. On the other side then Trent can then decrypt this, check Alice's identity to see if it's the same as in there. We'll be able to get the session key from here and then be able to decrypt this part of it. He then sends back the timestamp plus one, which is added one second on him, and then is able to send encrypt that with the new session key, and Alice will check that. Okay, so that, that's the setup of it. Hope you got that. Remember, Bob and Alice identities are sent to Trent. Trent picks off the encryption keys for both Bob and Alice. We'll create a new in session key, which is random. Generate a timestamp, a lifetime. You would then encrypt the timestamp, the lifetime, the new key, Bob's identity with Alice's encryption key. Sends that back. At the same time, we'll send through the timestamp, lifetime, the key, and Alice's identity, and encrypts that with Bob's key. Alice is then able to decrypt this part to pick off the key, session key, and also Bob's identity, and the timestamp. She then re-encrypts her identity and the timestamp with the new session key, so no one will be able to decrypt this in any reasonable time unless they can get that key and then also sends through the other part which Trent built up. Bob is then able to decrypt this part, gets the timestamp, the lifetime, the new key, Alice's identity. With the new key he's then able to decrypt this part. This part will give Alice's identity which he checks against this part and the timestamp. Then with the new session key that was created by Trent, we'll then add one on encrypt, the timestamp plus one, sends that back. Alice will check it and make sure that it's uh, timestamp plus one. In this way, we have proven the identity of Bob and Alice through our trusted party, Trent.